Good morning. Thank you for joining this session of Sabbath School today. A little devotional thought keyed in on lesson number 10 in our adult Sabbath School lessons entitled Mission to the Unreached, Part 1. Can we be fanatical about the cross of Jesus? Can we just say too much about it? Can we harp on it to the exclusion of other themes of the Bible? Get obsessed about Jesus' sacrifice? Well, there's a lot of philosophical arguments out there about uh, Christianity, and they can go on forever and get nowhere. Paul tried that out. He tried to meet philosophy with philosophy when he preached in that Greek land of Athens. But the results were only a handful of conversions. Acts 17, 15 through 34, you can read of it. So he learned his lesson. If you had been a member of Paul's church in Corinth, you would have heard him preach Sabbath after Sabbath for a whole year and a half on much the same theme. You could have even predicted what his sermon would be about, Christ and him crucified. 1 Corinthians 2, verses 1 and 2. Well, were the young people bored with these sermons? Uh, you know, the Corinthians were a motley bunch of people, a motley crew, mostly immoral people from their culture. According to Strabo, the historian, a thousand slave girls were temple prostitutes there. And the words to Corinthianize meant to be a slave to sex. It was, in, it was in here, everything, advertising, social life, commerce, everything was oriented around it. How was Paul to reach those people, saturated with immorality? Well, he had just come from a largely unsuccessful evangelistic campaign in Athens. And so we are told he, quote, determined to know nothing among the Corinthians, except the sacrifice of the Son of God. And there was a steady focus on the breadth and the length and the depth and the height of the love agape of Christ that was demonstrated at the cross. Was it fanaticism? No. It was sober, clear-headed thinking on Paul's part. Now, in history, there are all, let's talk about, or think about that second death Jesus died for on his cross, because all people except for two in the Old Testament, Enoch and Elijah, have died the first death, which Jesus called a sleep. Christ's death was different than that. It's bad enough to die, quote, despised, and rejected of men as he did. Isaiah 53, verse 3. But Jesus had to die feeling despised and rejected of God. Matthew 27, 46. It was a cumulative, corporate, total death embracing all humanity, a divine human consciousness of all the guilt of every person that killed Jesus, quote, made to be sin for us who knew no sin, unquote, 2 Corinthians 5.21. We can't encompass it. All we can do is to be prayed for by the Apostle Paul that we might comprehend it with all saints and not be left out, Ephesians 3.14-19. through Now we come to the time in world history, where in the great antitypical day of atonement, uh, we are living in that time right now, since 1844. And so it is too late for us to diverge, digress into similar arguments based on so-called science and philosophy and archaeology and even paleontology. The arguments are interesting. And some are startling conclusions being formed by scientists. But folks today, living in the Day of Atonement, we need to concentrate on the gospel 
and on Christ and Him crucified. When we meet Jesus face to face, as we shall for certain, we don't want the embarrassment of not having wanted to know Him, to have evaded fellowship with Him in His sufferings, to share with Paul what it means to be crucified with Christ. Oh, that will be glory. Dear Lord, we thank you for a wonderful good news to our own hearts that brings healing, but a message that we are to share with those that we come in contact with. This is God's mission and my mission. In Jesus' name, amen.